The following program is paid for by the Real Estate Radio Network. You're listening to Real Estate Radio Fresno on 105.9 The FM KMJ. Now, live in studio, your host, local real estate expert, Craig Barton. Good morning, Central Valley. I am your host, Craig Barton, and welcome to the Real Estate Radio Network, the most important hour of radio each week here on 105.9, the FM KMJ. Real Estate Radio is a show dedicated to bringing some rational thought to that crazy world that we live in and helping you to rebuild the Central Valley's housing and credit markets. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted advice. And that's exactly what you are going to hear every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. right here on 105.9, the FM KMJ. (laughs) Were you directing? (laughs) I just love our music so much. (laughs) Takes me back to our first show. Does it really? Yeah, we were sleeping on an elevator at that time, but we have gotten some rock and music. That's, now. that's about it. all I was motivated to do at four o'clock in the morning when we first Sweet. came on the air. So. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really peppy. Good morning, all. Thank you for joining us. Well, as always, it is so good to have happy camper Michelle Cavalli, and, Michelle Pettis Cavalli. And I am so excited about our show today. Kate's back. Kate's yeah. back. I don't know if you remember Hi, last week. I was Hi. really excited. We had <laughs> we were bragging on you last week. I don't you, know if you were. Yeah. We, we had some That's special requests time. to bring you back on the st- the show. There was actually one stalker. Was, I it, mean, my, was it my mom? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> she <laughs> <wanted me gone. laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> Sarah, you're you're always <laughs> there's a, Kate. There's Kate. She's listener. very supportive. No, it was actually a male admirer, and I have to say, oh. I, it, it was a bit <laughs> really? stalkish. So, and I think you know who you are. Um, <laughs> Could this be um, <laughs> within my husband? It was her husband. It, it was her husband. <laughs> he, yeah, he did. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. I it love was, it. It was, it was bad. It was yeah. really bad. You uh, might want to have a talk with him because it was creepy. It was yeah, yeah, especially now because we're, we're going to be working with Press 4. Oh. God only knows what you're going to get. Yeah, yikes. All right. <laughs> Calls from her husband. Yeah. yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, I do appreciate the support. Awesome. So, well, no thank stalking. You. Hey, you know, you, ha- you have that. to start somewhere. Absolutely. Just so you know, you got to build your, this is grassroots. Okay. You've got to build your listener base okay. from square one. Mm-hmm. It, it does start with stalkers mother and stalkers. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mothers, stalkers, and I don't know if you know they air this in the institutions as well. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, our signal is heard by. Paul, <laughs> oh, where do you think we get our 11 million I feel very safe. Yeah. <laughs> we do not discriminate. That's Just, right. You know. A listener is a listener. Yeah, exactly. Right. As always, so again, it's great to have Michelle Pettis Cavalli, our trusted local professional. Ooh, yeah, we, mm. I'm so happy I, to be here, and and my and a very good friend. He keeps trying to word this nicely, and I'm just not sure that. Just take it. Just I, take it. Just, I'm gonna, thank you. Just thank go you. With it's it like a compliment, right? Out, thank oh you. my gosh! You know the Real Estate Radio Network, Michelle. It's so doggone efficient. It gives us the opportunity each and every week to reach so many people for one full hour our goal at the real estate radio network is to get you the timely and accurate truth about your local real estate market so we We can bring you back home oh i'm sorry (laughs) but did i come in too early (laughs) hey that's okay i think we can do that with a jingle maybe next time we'll have some music to that Uh, you told johnny to get on that and i know it should sound like that you know like one of those hallmark shows or like you get a hug yeah at the end warm and fuzzy <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> work with me johnny all righty well on today's show we're going to take a closer look at how to win in today's real estate market how to construct an offer how to set some baseline expectations in terms of really as a buyer how hard are you going to have to work well mine um oh is it okay to share <laughs> because my clients let me tell you in this market we, we've become great friends i think i'm taking them all to the next family reunion <laughs> I have known some of them for quite some time. You should see some of the offers coming through the office. I, I think, it's unreal. I, I think this could be a cause for some sort of therapy or some yeah, type of thought so. session. So maybe so. maybe we should, you know, later in the show, Michelle, why don't we spend some time talking about your family reunion and just exactly uh, how you're fostering that relationship oh, I'm with your clients. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. But I do find it really interesting that some of uh, some agents that I've talked with recently do say that they have become great friends with their clients because they've had them so very long. Yeah. Because no. <laughs> offers are difficult to uh, serious, maneuver these days. Serious moment. Mm -hmm. You're exactly Mm -hmm. right. And that's why I think it's extremely important that we have that conversation with you to help set those baseline expectations because it is a difficult market to win in right at the moment. Home home affordability is at a 10-year low, which is great. But I have so many people still coming Mm -hmm. to us and saying, 
Well, it's a buyer's market, isn't it? Well, from an affordability standpoint, most definitely. But when overwhelming competition puts Mm -hmm. upward pressure on prices and offers and buyers, guess what? It changes the, the dynamics of the exactly. market, and that's why I think it's extremely important to have that conversation, which you'll hear in the second half hour of today's show. Make sure you stay with us. Well, if you have any real estate or real estate financing-related questions or questions regarding the information that you hear on our show, please call us anytime. We'd love to hear from you at 800-979-3958, or check out our resources online where you can also watch past shows from the Real Estate Radio Network on YouTube by going to our website at reofresnohomes.com. Or use press for a keyword. KMJ Call Valley Wide. To get connected to us anytime. We would so love to hear from you. Well, you heard me use press for keyword KMJ Call Valley Wide. Michelle, talk about press for. I got some real good feedback from the CEO of press for. Really? Wow. Yeah, exactly. Talking about exactly how you explained why it's so important. You, you broke it down and you explained why it's so important to utilize press for as a mechanism to get the word out about whatever it is we're talking about. Well, you know, I'm all about clarity. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> I want to be about clarity. I want I want people to understand that it is a great feature for any business, not just ours. Um, anybody who's trying to drive information to their clients when the client needs it. So I don't know about you, but I'm hearing things on the radio. I'm hearing things um, consistently that I might be curious about. But I don't have the availability, especially as much time as I spend in the car, right. to pull over and call right that second. And so, or text five three two four four to five six eight four four two. Exactly. Like, how can you remember the numbers? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. If I get another it. Twitter advertise, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they send me those advertisements on Twitter. Tw- press blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Anyways, they're trying to do it that way, and that's great. But when I'm driving, I don't have time for that. Yeah, exactly. So having the press four on my phone, I just hit the button, and then I say. Keyword, whatever my keyword is. KMJ, call Valley Wide. KMJ, call Valley Wide. KMJ, call Craig. Whatever the case may be. Hot property is usually uh, one that uh, I get people asking about, talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, Nonetheless, if they push the button, it's going to get them directly to the information source via phone. It also will send them information. And I think that's important because, I mean... What better way to get the information than immediately? Because well, I don't know about you. For you. you don't yeah. have to go looking for it. Exactly. I don't think that's nice. That's the intent. Yeah. It, it simplifies the process of pushing information to the consumer, pushing mm-hmm. information to our listeners about our show and whatever topic it is that we're talking right. about. If it is a hot property, if it's KMJ um, hot property, it emails, it actually it texts you our phone number, our web address. You get all sorts of resources online at um, reofresnohomes.com. And then it also sends you a printout of that hot property or hot properties, depending upon if we're featuring multiple properties on the show that day, uh, and it shares it with you. One touch of a button really can do it all. Well, and the nice part is anybody who wants to add this to their marketing uh, I, I'm all about marketing. Anybody who wants to add this to their their bag of You're tricks? You're all about getting the word out. I am because I think, you know, I'm getting ready to invite that family reunion on. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I'm I was kidding, I'm kidding. I can't. I cannot support all the agents here in town. They cannot all bring their clients to my okay, family reunion. Good. It's just not going to happen. Can I? Do I get an invite? Well, you do. I good because good. yeah. Good to know. Because you need some help. No, well, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> because I have no life, right? No, I need no, three no, of me no, to keep no, up with the yeah, one that I have. Thank exactly. you. Exactly. Just go to the Press Four website, follow the easy setup instructions. One button really can do it all. And it's a four, number four. Press it is four. Press no. four, not F O U R P R E S S number four. You com. got it. Well, let's take a look at today's hot property. Today's hot property. I'm telling you right now, if this sucker is 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 around for much longer, we just had a price reduction. FYI, price oh. reduction. Now I'm getting everyone's okay. attention. I'm just going to say, I am offended almost that this has not moved. Can I just say that? No, well, it is a great let me, piece let of me property say this. in a great okay. neighborhood. I mean, I was there yesterday. I'm going to talk about Okay, let me let me let me okay. break it down for Shut you. Shut up. 1180. No, that's okay. 1188 <laughs> West Ellery Avenue, Fresno, California, nine three seven one one. Really, just north of us here, south of Sierra Avenue. This property mm-hmm. is four bedroom, three bath, twenty eight hundred and twenty eight square feet. I want to buy it myself. It's a nice property. Yeah, built in really nineteen sixty nine, but it has been updated. I can't stress that enough. This home sits on a fifteen thousand six hundred square foot lot with a pool. Yeah, and let me just say, I think the important piece is when you drive this property. 
nothing about it jumps out at right. you. It's not. You've got to the go. house across the street and the houses around it have beautiful landscaped yards, etc. Mm-hmm. This one's been sitting idle for a while, so it needs some flowers and needs some love on the yard. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's not one that jumps out at you. But it is a beautiful custom ranch style house, mm-hmm. and they've redone the tile. It's a gorgeous. I mean, updated the kitchen. It's a nice, nice property. A great family property if somebody wants to live in an established. A uh, comfortable neighborhood. I mean, really, these are these are custom lots. I mean, they're they're great. Well, it, it's it, a great area. You brought up a good point. This particular property was appraised at two hundred and seventy thousand, yeah. just reduced ten wow. percent to two forty three. Somebody That's picks huge. it up at two two forty three. I'm telling you right now, you walk in instant equity. Yeah. Now, here's what I think. Um, I spoke with the appraiser in depth on this particular property, and just real quick, it is a custom home. Mm-hmm. And if you if you look at really a half mile radius around this property, there's a number of. It's very typical that you would find other custom homes within a half mile radius. However, there's also other tracked homes within that half mile that also may limit in terms of the number of comparables that you do have. So what are you comparing this particular mm-hmm. home against? Are you con- comparing it with an abundance of tracked homes that have uh, that have gone uh, to, uh, in other words, short sale, foreclosure, what have you? Um, we came in originally at a BPO price of roughly about its current list price of 243 Well, the appraiser came in at 270 because he was comparing like with like. He was mm-hmm. comparing custom construction with custom construction. Older custom construction, mm-hmm. but nonetheless, apples and apples. Mm-hmm. So guess what? Another agent goes out and doesn't and, and pulls the information, not understanding, not looking at the comparables right. and determining, is this tracked or is this custom? Well, this is custom. So if they're, go- oh, man, that, that thing's overpriced. Mm-hmm. Well, you've got to make sure that you're doing your homework because... Um, if you're not comparing apples and apples, you're getting kind of a false right. negative in terms right. of... Well, and there are so many sources that you can get quote-unquote <laughs> comps from that right. I mean, exactly. people might be getting confused because there Correct. is a difference. Yeah. It is really... They really need to drive the property. If anybody's interested at all, driving the property is going to show you. Um, but then also seeing inside of the property the updates that have been made. Certainly. Um, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, this property. particular property is going to go fast. If you'd like more information, uh, the, the bidding deadline is daily on this particular property. Owner, actually, it is open to all bidders, right. investors as well as. Mm-hmm. So second home or investors mm-hmm. are eligible at this point in time. If you'd like more information about today's hot property, please give us a call anytime on our off-air number at 800-979-3958 or use press 4 keyword KMJ Hot Property. And we'll send more information about this hot property right to your phone. Look for more hot properties each week here on the Real Estate Radio Network. Well, real quick, let's talk about Find Your New Home. Mm-hmm. Michelle, I, I keep saying this, how efficiently are our buyers that you are talking with, how efficient a job are they doing in terms of finding their new homes? Yeah, I can't tell you how many calls I get on properties we no longer have available. Oh, no. Um, so... Yeah, meaning, absolutely. Meaning that meaning. Like I just mentioned earlier, so many resources out on the web. That imprint that's out there, yeah. uh, and, and you know, it's it's misinformation. Inter- yeah, yeah, it's exactly. It, it is. It's a. It's a snapshot. Really, mm-hmm. um, it's not real time. And it says this. We take this information. It's active. It's live now. We're all good. Right. But well, and we went. You actually had me meet with some clients from out of the area mm-hmm. last Saturday right. who were coming to town. Um, we were looking at properties in the Madera area, and they had this list from Trulia that they had found and unfortunately we set the appointment Friday right evening I think even it was late on Friday gotcha. it seemed like um, for the Saturday appointment and we were going to meet at a particular listing so we met at that particular listing she had this whole list of Trulia and out of all of those properties one was on the market and one that one needed an appointment because it was a short sale so uh, all of her research and driving two hours she was she was a little discouraged, you know, because well, everything bet. that she had thought she was going to be able to drive by and, and have available was not available. Well, it's not there, and, yeah. and let's take a look at that real quick, because as Jeffy would say, mm-hmm. our buddy Jeffy that works in our office in our REO department, that was a huge opportunity to flip the script as far as that client's concerned and make sure that they understand. Oh, and it, guess what? Guess if there what? is no more powerful indication as to exactly mm-hmm. how this river is flowing exactly. as far as our market is mm-hmm. concerned mm-hmm. that was it right right there. so what we did was we set up a specific criteria now and we've got it all dialed in for them and now before they venture this way again um, because it was a last minute thing before they venture this way again we will have the ability to keep an eye on things very closely powerful Compre- learning opportunity a comprehensive up-to-date list right. and yeah. they may only come to see one property or two properties that fit their criteria that are available but at least they know that be a better when search, they come though. down no More exactly because search. our initial yeah. conversation was about uh, 
uh, I think, two or three different properties, and we had discussed those. But then when she shows up with this list that she'd researched the night before, and I'm like, oh, well, unfortunately. Well, let me tell you, if, if they get to see two properties the next time they come down, their results have in, increased by 200%. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that is very success. true. Very, what, very what do true. they say, Kate? Uh, past performance is no guarantee of no uh, future, future results. results. <laughs> <laughs> I have that tattooed on my arm. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you'd like more information on how we or Michelle can help set up that search for you, don't hesitate to give us a call at 800-979-3958 or use press 4 keyword. KMJ, call Valley Wide. And Michelle you can help. I miss it, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can help simplify <laughs> that search for your new home. Real quick, let's talk about some of the top stories in the news. When really is it, Michelle, the right time to refinance? When it makes dollars and cents. When it makes dollars and cents. Well, you know what? That's Cast- cute. <laughs> that was cute. He put me on the spot there. I like it. He did not give me these notes prior to. Exactly. I love it that way. <laughs> he likes when I, I'm I never off know, the cuff. I, I never like know it. what I'm going to get. Well, <laughs> let me tell you, past wisdom, uh, especially previously, uh, <laughs> I say previously, pre- previous to five years ago, people used to say, well, if you were able to experience at least a 1% net in, in overall reduction of your interest rate, then it potentially would make dollars and cents. But keep in mind, in today's market, we've got a whole different set of, of problems and issues as far as mortgages are concerned. Mm-hmm. First and foremost, um, if you do owe less than, than what your home is worth, consider yourself amazingly blessed, blessed. and very, very lucky because mm-hmm. that is not necessarily the norm. Um, if you're trying to reduce the term, uh, interest rates are ex- uh, just amazing, uh, below 3% on a 15-year fixed rate. Isn't that amazing? That is we can, insane. We can do... Uh, that is insane. Below That's 3% exciting. with an with yeah, an APR well, yeah. still below 3%. For those of us in the market wow. who actually look at those options for clients, that is just amazing. They get so excited when we're able to, to look at those numbers, and they go from... You know, a payment of a couple thousand dollars down, mm-hmm. you know, by hundreds and hundreds of dollars to to shoot that down to a fifteen is amazing. If you look, if if, if bottom line, you look and you say you've got twenty three years left on your mortgage and you're going to cut it from a five and a half percent rate down to something sub three mm-hmm. percent, below three percent. You're looking uh, at eight years times twelve months. Uh huh. Times their payment exactly that they principal just saved and interest. principal and interest that so they will save mm-hmm. over the life of the loan mm-hmm. plus. Any change to their payment, if Correct. it's possible. Mm-hmm. So that is a, I mean, that is just amazing. Amazing. So when is a good time to refinance? If you're upside down, and let's say your home is, uh, your mortgage is owned by Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. Again, HARP 2.0, that is the, uh, that, that buzzword that continues to be bounced around out there. Um, if your mortgage is owned by Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac and you owe 200 and your house is worth 150, there still is hope. Not just your primary residence, not just your second home, not just your investment property. It's all three. So if you do need some relief, um, it might be time to talk. At mm-hmm. least let us help get you some numbers. Right. Um, and we can put you in contact with Timur O'Hare, who is our mortgage advisor with Valley Wide Homes, and he'll help to get you some numbers and really yeah. get you kind of a feel for what he can do to help if there is Or anything. even just wonder what your property value currently is worth. Yeah. I mean, that's huge. Tim can help you out with that. Most definitely. Well, after the break, stay tuned because we are going to get into some nuts and bolts with our Market Watch update. Very with, exciting. With Kate, Kate rubbing her hand. Very exciting. There go. Kate Island, financial advisor with UBS Securities. You're not going to want to miss this. You are listening to the Real Estate Radio Network here on 105.9, the FM KMJ. This program is brought to you by the Real Estate Radio Network. Visit realestateradio.us for more info. That's realestateradio.us. Thinking about buying a home? Find out how the HUD Home Store can help you. Visit HUDHomestore.com. Look at HUD homes available for sale near you or nationwide. Why HUD Home Store? HUD will pay up to 3% of the buyer's closing cost. The price of the home is based on an FHA as is appraisal, which is already completed, saving you an average of $400. And there is an owner-occupant priority bidding period during the first 30 days. Want to know more? Visit HUDHomestore.com. 
Mortgage interest rates are at historic lows, and there's never been a more affordable time to buy real estate. Whether you're looking for your first home, moving up, or your next income-producing property, let the mortgage professionals at Valleywide help. Valleywide Homes has been helping homeowners with their mortgage needs since 1997. When it comes to the Valley's real estate, we know our way around the neighborhood. Call toll-free, 800-979-3958, and put the seasoned professionals at Valleywide Homes to work for you. Valleywide Homes, and MLS number 342-062-235-952, California Department of Real Estate License, 0122 You're listening to Real Estate Radio Network with local expert Craig Barton. Now, here's Craig. Well, today we've got in the studio again with us Kate Island from UBS, or financial advisor from UBS Financial Services, with our Market Watch update. Yes. I was all excited to give the update, but I don't have, like, fantastic news. I was just excited <laughs> to share the information. Hey, you know, so. you got it. it it's, I'm sorry. It's just, just, a, just a straight shooter, Kate. That's, That's all we right. expect. That's right. That's right. We don't um, want you to lie. No, no, no. We can't, we can't move forward without a good roadmap in place. It Absolutely. Keeps us going in the right direction. So help, Absolutely. Help, help define educate us. again. Okay. You, you gave us a good 2011 and year to date. So yeah. where are we at today? Well, so a, a lot happened has happened in the month of May and then thus far in the month of June. Um, the equity markets were hit pretty hard in May. The international markets were hit even harder um, because of what's going on in Europe. I mean, th there are other issues, but that's pretty much th the biggest thing. Um, even commodity prices, commodity pricing has actually been like the weakest area of the market year to date. Um, and you can see that actually, hopefully you see it at the gas pump because oil prices have dropped significantly, mm -hmm. so much so that in May, Average price of gas per gallon is 3.78 versus April of just under four dollars. So it's been a big drop. Um, oil price, you know, drop in oil prices. Everybody thinks that's good, but this steep of a decline is not necessarily a good sign for the economy because then the question is like, oh, is it tied to deflation? Right, then you know, right. there's lots of talk because of the quote unquote money printing of all this inflation. But really, and I'll kind of get into a little bit. But um, I, you know, it almost looks as though a lot of market metrics are telling us that actually deflation is more of a risk at this point in gotcha. time. So I think it's just interesting to follow the price of oil. Yay for anybody who's <laughs> <laughs> filling up your car, right. but not so great for the markets. Um, so what caused the sell-off? Part of the reason for the steep market downturn in May was that the first quarter U.S. economic reading, um, initially the reading was that our economy was growing at 2.2%. That reading was revised down to 1.9%. Mm -hmm. So our economy is growing at less than less than 2%. Um, additionally, you know, as we said last time I was on, like it's, a, it's about the jobs. It's about mm -hmm. jobs, 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 housing, jobs. Job. Right. <laughs> okay. right. Um, so initial jobless claims increased quite unexpectedly, and it brought unemployment back up to 8.3 percent wow. and uh, you know according to UBS payroll gains uh, amounted to a pretty lackluster 69,000 so only 69,000 jobs were gained in May and that's following two months of negative revision so in economics it's like you get a number and then a couple weeks later you get a revision and that's right. like the real number and all the revisions we've seen are downward, downward which is right. not fantastic right. um, and if the troubles here at home weren't enough um, the eurozone has kept itself in the headlines with pretty much nothing but uncertainty. And Greece has taken a bit of a breather from hogging all the headlines. Um, but keep in mind, today, huge election going on there. So everybody flip on the news. Just look and see what's going on. Wow. Um, Craig and I were joking before the show. I don't know if anybody saw it, but there was somebody, some woman in Parliament got slapped in Greece. I mean, this is how crazy the situation <laughs> is there. Like a man actually slapped well, a woman. What I, mean, I it's heard... Just, it's just nuts. Uh, it's to, nuts. To bring some truth and some clarity. I know you like clarity, Michelle. Yes. To bring some clarity, it, Jerry Springer was actually there in Parliament, actually filming an episode. <laughs> no, it's the truth. Are you kidding me? I am not. No, it is wow. Not now that should have been the top headline for the day. Jerry yeah, Springer but, in I Parliament. Mean, but that just tells you like what is going on over yeah. there. How ridiculous it, it all is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's crazy. And so, you know, the world is kind of, we're all waiting with, you know, with our breath held just to see if the anti-austerity party, who again, they favor kind of tearing up the Greek bailout um, and, and they want policies geared more towards growth. So it's, it's a battle between those two parties. And, you know, UBS thinks, and I totally agree, that this election really could decide decide the, the fate of the Greeks in the euro currency. Mm -hmm. They're calling it a Grexit, a Greek exit. 
Grexit. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So wow. undoubtedly, um, a Grexit definitely has the potential to cause massive bank runs in the eurozone. That's why it's such a big issue. It's not really the issue that you know the euro is going to lose or the eurozone is going to lose the the economic production of Greece. It's that then if you're someone who lives in the eurozone and you've got your money in any bank there in euros, and one of those countries leaves the euro and goes back to another currency, my first thought would be, well, is you know, is my, my bank going to do right. that? Yeah, is, is the country that I live in going to do that? I mean, it really can cause a major disruption. So I'm kind of waiting for that. Um, and while we've been waiting for this election in Greece, Spain has kind of taken over the headlines. And um, in May, and then it kind of has continued on into June, we've seen some pretty large deposits. So I, it's not a bank run. I wouldn't say that. But people are taking their money out of banks, mm -hmm. no doubt about it. And Spain's third largest bank which is called Bankia, actually had to be nationalized. So they essentially were going they under, and they, 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 yep. the government took it over. Um, Spain received a three-notch credit downgrade, so three notches all at once. That's a pretty big move. Um, and last weekend, so Spain's prime minister has been saying all along, like, we're going to solve all these problems in-house, meaning we're not going to ask for bailout funds. And then quite literally two weeks later, uh, actually, we need 100 billion euro. <laughs> So there's, you know, so, so that's another part of the uncertainty is it's like you get one number and then, you know, a couple weeks later, the number is just astronomical. Um, a report issued by UBS that was actually pretty interesting was saying that they actually think a total bailout for Spain could end up being in the 300 billion wow. euro Holy mark. I mean, it's, a, it's not chump change for sure. Wow. So initially on the news that Spain was going to get this bailout, the market jumped and then immediately took a downturn because now the question is, well, how are they going to get that money through the temporary bailout fund or the permanent bailout fund? And this is where it gets a little messy and there's all kind of acronyms. But essentially, if it comes from the permanent bailout fund, that money, th those those bondholders or the, the entity that issues that debt, then like ta like cuts in line and becomes first as far as if Spain then like defaults that that permanent fund gets paid off first. So everybody else that's lent the money to the banks gets is second, second third, in fourth, line. last in wow. line. And so obviously you can imagine if big institutions, you know, people have their money, you know, lent right. money to the banks and essentially bought their bonds and then suddenly someone comes in and cuts in line and says, nope, like we're first. I mean, it, it cre again, yes. uncertainty, it creates problems. And that's like what this whole thing is stemming mm -hmm. from. So... That, you know, that's Spain. And then once Spain comes into question, then it's Italy. So it's like it's it's just kind of a mess over there. And right. it's like one thing, you know, happens and then another. So it's a little bit of a domino effect. And basically it comes down to the main issue is that the Eurozone is really just lacking the economic institutions to sustain this this project that we call the euro. I mean, and that's really what it is. It's a project. Um, and according to UBS, Germany, who's the strongest economy in the Eurozone, is holding out, and they are not interested in issuing joint euro bonds. They are not interested in, like, combining their economy with anybody else until they see more fiscal discipline. Mm -hmm. Understandable. Oh you don't want to gosh, throw in yeah. with somebody who's been spending money like crazy mm -hmm. and who's not balancing their budget mm -hmm. because Germany is, you know, there's all <laughs> kinds of jokes about Germans. Germany. I'm German, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. German, too. Germany keeps, Germany, that guy over there keeps giving that credit card to his junior in high school. And let me tell you, they <laughs> yeah, just keep. No, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. It is that. You know, that's it. And, so, and really, you know, there, there's not like a general consensus around the world as to like what's going to fix all of this. Mm -hmm. And that, again, just leads to uncertainty. Mm-hmm. I would say, though, at least in the short term, it looks as though stimulus and easing is is right now that kind of that medicine that everybody needs because um, at the beginning of June, Brazil, China, India, and Australia all lowered interest rates. So kind of like qu quantitative mm -hmm. easing, you know, mm -hmm. in that realm, it's just again making money cheaper, lowering interest rates. Right. Help, you know, hopefully it'll help um, you know spur growth through more purchases. Um, the Eurozone is expected to be in a recession throughout 2012, and so the probability of more central bank stimulus has increased around the world, even here in the U.S. And in fact, I just read something uh, a couple days ago that of economists who were surveyed, the probability that they think that the U.S. is going to do another round of easing has increased quite a bit, and now that probability stands at like 40%. Wow. Interesting to note, though. So last time I was on, you know, we talked about quantitative easing and what that really means, mm -hmm. and that you know it's something that the Fed does. Um, in all this mess with Europe, 
our 10-year Treasury dipped below 1.5%. So the, all the mess in the Eurozone is kind of doing the job of the Feds for us because mm-hmm. you know right. our dollar's going up, the Euro's mm-hmm. going down, but that's also bringing, um, because there's a huge fear trade, mm-hmm. people are right. scared. They want their assets in the safest thing that is right. out there, right. and it's all relative mm-hmm. <laughs> because yep. right. relatively right. Right. speaking, we're pretty strong on an absolute basis. You could make a case otherwise. That'd be nice. Um, you know, so it's it's been chaotic. Our rates have come down, so the Feds haven't had to stimulate the economy. Right. You know, Operation Twist is ending this this month, so that was kind of a big deal. But do they need to do more easing? And you know, UBS has some kind of interesting reports about it, and that the more and more our Federal Reserve eases, the less if eff- like effectiveness it has. And so I hope that the Fed takes that into consideration because it's kind of watered down. It's like, how much more money do you throw at it? Mm-hmm. And really, what is it right. going to do? And I, you know, and th- so this is a question for you guys, like with mortgage rates, you know, 30 year at three and three quarters or under, sub four, mm-hmm. 15 years, sub three. If rates go down, I mean, if you can't buy a house at those levels, like if you can't afford a house at those levels, like does another 25 basis point reduction, does, does it does it make a difference? How good is good? Yeah. Does good get gooder? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's about the jobs. If you don't have right. a job, you're not buying a house. Thank it doesn't you, matter if rates are zero. Thank so you. you know, so again, I mean, it all just kind of go, and it's frustrating to right. watch. So I'm, I know, I know how all of you feel out there. Because I mean, my job is is to look at all this stuff. So believe me, <laughs> I drink a lot, and I no, um, no, you know, but I mean, but it helps to pay attention. So that's why yeah, we absolutely. do. You know, that's why I'm here is just to kind of mm-hmm. like point out really what's going on. Um, so with you know, the Greek election looming today, the fate of the Eurozone is being called into question on a daily basis. The world's largest economy, which is us, has is, is been faltering lately. You know, the stock market has been swinging all over the place, and interest rates are at all time lows. So you can't just like park your money at a bank because you're earning nothing. Right. right. So then, like, what do you do? So, you know, what do you do? So. I'm here to answer <laughs> answer that question. Hopefully, so um, I'm so I'm going to interrupt right there yeah. and just say, if you're a business owner out there, and you can bring on an employee and you can afford to do it, do it, do it. It would solve the jobs. jobs. Yes. However, however, I mean, I'm th- be- this this yeah. is the this is like the core issue of what's going on in our politics right now mm-hmm. is that. We don't know what our tax rates are going to be because of the mm-hmm. fiscal cliff. We don't right, know what the cost right, of right, health care right. is going to be. So when you bring I on want, an employee, it's yeah. not just the cost of what their no, salary it is. It's the cost of you know them as an employee, mm-hmm. their benefit. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, their benefits. And so employers don't know what that is. And if you're a small business and you don't know if like certain tax deductions are going away and that mm-hmm. kind. Of, and America is the land of small businesses. Like it's great. It's a great opportunity. The problem is if you don't know what the policies are, you know, next year, next month, let alone. Right. Next you can't year, plan. Five years now, it's very hard to plan, and that's why right. there is, you know, there's there's jobs being held sure. back. I think. Mm-hmm. I mean, all you have to look at is basically like the balance sheets of corp of big corporations. There's over a trillion dollars in cash sitting in the coffers yep. of U.S. corporations. Why in the world would they be doing that when they're earning zero on it? Because they don't know what the policies are going to be, and right. they don't want to deploy a bunch of capital, right. and, yep. and then have it, you know, have policies go against them. So it's, you know. Politicians, let's let's do something good here. We hope, you know, we hope, and this int- this election here will be very interesting. Yeah, interesting otherwise, is a nice way. Otherwise, to all that it. money that's sitting on the sideline is expected to stay on the sideline until after the first of the year, until mm-hmm. there is some de- until there is some s- some decision making that's mm-hmm. been completed, absolutely, and some certainty in terms of can you bring that employee on and really truly can you drill down exactly what they're going to cost you bottom line. Exactly. Well, and you know, and even then, so we know that there's not going to be any major policy. See changes before the election. That 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 would be political <laughs> suicide. So I know, surprise. Yeah, yeah, because or, it's just the politicians not, are again yeah, not yeah. going to do anything. Uh, and I don't mean to harp on them, but I mean it's really like, it's it's pretty obvious, and I think mm-hmm. and most people feel the same way. So they've got this very short window of time between the election and their holiday break where they can actually make policy changes before all those things in the fiscal cliff hit. So what are they probably going to do? Just push it out a little bit. Mm-hmm. You, they're not going to make any kind of major policy changes in a four or five week period of time. It's just not going to happen. So I don't even know if really next year we'll get the answers that we want. Um, but that being said, like, here's the thing. Like, investors, don't panic. Don't panic. 
because we're still seeing opportunities and right. clients you can there are areas of the market that are making money right and I think you really have to have in mind also like what is your time frame mm -hmm. if you're buying a stock and it doesn't make money in the first month and then you dump it you probably shouldn't be in the stock market right. and exactly. I don't, I'm not trying to say that to be rude but you know sometimes that happens like mm -hmm. you know there's kind of a euphoria well, there's normal the fluctuations <laughs> absolutely yeah the thing you really have to think of is I'm not buying a stock I'm buying a company mm -hmm. and Michelle you and I kind of talked about this mm -hmm. after after the show is like you know buy a company that you know buy a company that you understand right. the products you understand what they do exactly. what they make if you yeah. shop there or yeah. if you buy their products then you have some faith in what they're providing exactly. folks that's exactly. the kind of company to exactly. invest in exactly well and dividends mm -hmm. I mean go a long way so mm -hmm. I don't want to make it too specific but like you know the first thing, you know, don't panic Right. You know the markets are rough, but don't panic. The second thing is, just like you were talking about those people who came <laughs> and had the long list, like yeah. they need to utilize the help of a professional. Yeah. You know, this is what I do every day, all day. Right. I read, I follow the markets, I, yeah, I actually do work with client assets. Like, if you're doing this on your own, you're just not going to have that that knowledge base. Mm -hmm. People are knowledgeable without a financial advisor. Sure, advantage. sure, I sure. say that, but, you know, again, this is what people hire us for. Right, and so, professional advice. Yeah, and Absolutely. so, like, for instance, like, my team offers monthly, in-person, just kind of, like, market updates where people mm -hmm. can come, hear what's going on in the market, and ask their questions. So stay educated. Mm -hmm. You know, don't panic and stay educated. Um, and most importantly, and I cannot stress this enough, is you have to have a plan, a plan, a plan, a plan. Um, the, the volatility in the market can absolutely have a dramatic effect on your retirement and your financial security, but you have no way to gauge what that impact is if you don't have a plan. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not just that, like, that if you have something that's invested and it goes down, that's that's the impact. It could also be that we've got a lot of investors with cash on the sidelines. You could be missing out on opportunities. When the market dropped, you know, ten percent from top to bottom from April to May. Hey, that's a ten percent sale. Who doesn't like buying things on a discount? And if you can pick up a good company, you know, figure out kind of where prices are dislocated in the market. I'm not just talking about stocks, bonds too. Um, you know, that's also a risk to your plan is not taking action. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you have a lot of cash on the sidelines, do you have a plan to invest it? It's one thing to make the decision to sell something and then put the money in cash, but then you've also got to make the decision to put it back in there. So, again, I would just say, like, utilize the help of a professional. It's part of the mechanism, right, Kate? Abs yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, if you've got money in cash, you know that at some point in time, you know, you're going to be losing money to inflation. Um, and, you know, and that's a big issue over, over a long period of time. So to kind of wrap it up, you know, if, you, if you're already retired and you are taking distributions from your account and from your investments, you need to talk to a professional about how these swings and these low interest rates are affecting your distributions and and the availability of that money like going forward because if you you know if you're if you've got all your money in bonds and let's say it's all in treasuries i don't know who would do that but and you're making one and a half percent or one percent mm -hmm. and you're taking out five percent at some point in time that money's going to run out so what do you do to adjust take out less money or do you need to try and increase your returns and again you just need to you know assess that by looking at your total financial picture you know and 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 having a plan in place and whether you're retired or you're working, you know, back of the napkin planning doesn't cut it. Like you can figure, you know, we have, and we have time to. about us? I don't know. I, you was, know, I have, resemble that remark. Yeah, and we have people, you know, they'll come in, it's like I have this much, so if I'm taking out, you know, this much a year, it'll last this long. And it's like, okay, well, what if, what about inflation? You know, what if, what if one year the market's up, one year the market's down? You know, the, the, the sequence of returns when you're taking money out of your mm -hmm. account has a huge effect. That's probably the biggest factor that affects your account, like when you're retired. Um, so just go and see somebody, right, you know, right. for a plan. And so three things, if I can kind of like wrap up, like what a financial plan really does and like what we try and do with our clients in regards to financial planning is one, a plan helps you make sense of your financial lives. What do you have coming in? What yep. do you have going out? Mm -hmm. What do you owe? What do you own? And, and what are those things now? And what are those things in the future? The second thing that it does is it helps recreate a paycheck in retirement. You're not going to work forever, at least hopefully you're not. <laughs> you know, enjoy some years where, you don't, where you're not working. Um, so how are you going to have income in retirement? What are those sources going to be? Guaranteed, not guaranteed? You know, what's the fluctuation in those? And then the third thing that a financial plan does is it figures out the best way to transfer your hard-earned assets to your loved ones or your beloved charities to keep it from going to the government. So true. Bottom oh, line, yeah. to keep it, if, it yeah. if anything, just keep it from going to the government. So if you don't have something yeah. that you work with, 
Or well, if Sam you, wants that bet. <laughs> yeah, he absolutely <laughs> does. Yeah, he has, and that's why his state taxes his are changing so much. Yeah. <laughs> so if you don't have somebody that you work with, or if the advisor that you work with doesn't do planning, or you just kind of want to get a second opinion, or you just want to plan, you know, please reach out to us. I mean, you can, my name is Kate Island. Work at UBS. You can reach me. Uh, my telephone number is five five nine. Two four eight four zero nine seven, and eventually I will get a press four <laughs> thing set up. Hey, we're working we on it. Yeah, we're gonna have no. it. We're gonna have <laughs> Let it. Let me just right? tell you, Kate. Little did you know, but if you'd like to get in contact with Kate oh. and get Kate, uh, get, have uh, how should I say this? Get all of Kate's contact information. Uh, Her web address, telephone, yeah. web address, email. and some information, email mm-hmm. as well. And no more stalkers. I'll have to, I'll, <laughs> and you know, you know who you are, Tyler. That's right. All you have to do is use the press four keywords KMJ. Call, call Kate. Kate exactly. Lovely. We'll have Thank you. you. We'll put you in contact with Kate Island from UBS Financial Services. Fantastic. And until we have you on the show again, mm-hmm. now keep in mind, market update or market watch update is whenever Kate is willing to be in the studio with us. But at some point down the road, remember, we're going to have a show about getting your financial house in order. Yes. So, so mm. important. So critical yes. right now. It's easier than you think. We, we 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 make it easier than you think. It's just sometimes people don't, you know. I think it's, people it's are overwhelmed scary. by their lack of understanding yeah. and lack of education in some areas of yeah. the finance world. All I can and say is this. Over the last five or six years, we have, we have collectively in the United States blown so much of our net worth as well as our retirement assets Mm -hmm. that we really need to, quote, unquote, have that conversation, rip the Band-Aid off, and determine, GPS, where are we at? And where do we Where are we going? And really, how do we get there? What's my roadmap? And how long do we have to get there? Right. So, right. So, Kate, again, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank Always love to have me. you. Appreciate it. Again, if you have any real estate or real estate financing related questions um, or just questions regarding the information that we cover here on our show, we'd love to hear from you. Call us anytime on our off air number at 800 979 3958 or check out our resources online where you can listen to past shows from the Real Estate Radio Network um, via YouTube by going to our website at reofresnohomes.com or just use press 4 keyword KMJ Call Valley Wide to get connected to us any. Any, any time. Well, after the break, we're going to take a closer look um, at what does it really take to make a solid competitive offer in today's market? And how do you win in today's real estate market? How's that offer constructed? Um, And do you have a baseline expectation coming onto the street? Do you? Well, we're going to find out. We'll see you on the other side of the break. You're listening to the Real Estate Radio Network here on 105.9, the FM KMJ. This program is brought to you by the Real Estate Radio Network. Visit realestateradio.us for more info. That's realestateradio.us. Thinking about buying a home? Find out how the HUD Home Store can help you. Visit hudhomestore.com. Look at HUD homes available for sale near you or nationwide. Why HUD Home Store? HUD will pay up to 3% of the buyer's closing cost. The price of the home is based on an FHA as is appraisal, which is already completed, saving you an average of $400. And there is an owner-occupant priority bidding period during the first 30 days. Want to know more? Visit hudhomestore.com. All it takes is one call to the professionals at Valleywide Homes and you'll start building wealth in real estate. Whether you're looking for your first home, moving up, or your next income-producing investment property, let the experts at Valleywide Homes help. There's never been a better time to get into the real estate market. Visit our website at reofresnohomes.com or call toll-free 800-979-3958. That's 800-979-3958. And put the seasoned professionals at Valleywide Homes to work for you. You're listening to Real Estate Radio Network with local expert Craig Martin. Now, here's Craig. Well, before the break, Michelle, I told you that we are going to talk about how to construct a good competitive offer in today's real estate market. But let me just say this. We first need, just like we were talking to Kate earlier, um, uh, when it comes to financial planning, we need to know where we're at as far as today's market goes. Um, Currently, as of this morning, roughly about 1,385 um, active listings in Fresno County. How many? 1,385. We're under two months. Yeah, under two months inventory. Let's take a look back real quick to April of, excuse me, March of 2011. In March of 2011, 
uh, we sold collectively in Fresno County 819 single-family residences. In um, April of 2011, we sold 874. So the numbers are much the same. Uh, March of 2012, 805 active listings closed. And um, April of 2012, 802. So we're really trending right there in terms of numbers about the same. However, though, what we're seeing in terms of, of net numbers of active listings, our inventory is roughly about 40%. Uh, uh, of what it was at the same time last year, which continues to put upward pressure on consumers, puts upward pressure. Sellers love it, let me tell you. Puts upward pressure on consumers, how they structure their offers, do they ask for a seller concession. Our, our goal today is to help set a real clear and concise expectation of if you are going to look for a property in today's market and you have not sat down with an agent, let's give you uh, uh, some information that I think will be helpful because you know that you're not going to set this this realtor up for failure when it comes right down to it because your expectations are out of line. And I, and I can't stress that enough. Um, it, it, I, we're just being real because having expectations that are out of line are really, truly unfair to you and anyone that you work with. Um, are you going to come in on a $150,000 listing and offer one thirty five and think that you're going to get it? You are wasting your time. Bottom line. Absolutely, bottom time. As bottom an line. agent, can you tell clients that, like, if they if you think their offer is unrealistic? Yes, and you do. I I, I can and I will because I'm yeah. looking at the market. I'm looking at yeah. the comparables in that area, and I well, I may well, still make their offer, but I will let them know. You don't. Here's my concern. Yeah. My concern is this: the properties in this neighborhood are going for a hundred thousand consistently. You're offering eighty. Right. Why? I mean, let's let's. Well, right. well, why are we it doing this? Go under, yeah. It's a waste of everyone's time. Right. So right. we want to make sure we're real with them and they're real with us. And right. let's let's Which talk about what the needs are too. versus yeah. the, the relationship wants. is predicated on the fact that yeah. the buyer wants to buy a property. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you say I'm going to go to the uh, the Corvette dealership and then right. I'm going to pick up a Corvette for thirty two thousand dollars when the sticker is forty eight thousand dollars on every right. single one of them, mm -hmm. your expectations are slightly unrealistic. So the buyer wants to pick up a property. What's the property listed mm -hmm. for? Um, what's the property listed for, relatively speaking, to the rest of the neighborhood? Is the property listed at 100000 utilizing right. Michelle's example? And everything selling that is like, comparing apples and apples, uh, 1,200 square feet, uh, three bedroom, two bath, built in 1976, between 1976 and 1982. Well, guess what? You need to be uh, – if if you want a chance of getting this particular property, if it's a game to you, then maybe you need to go play your game elsewhere. I, mm -hmm. I, I can't stress that enough. Right. And I hate to sound – I hate to sound – You're so harsh. I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm just such a meanie, aren't I? God, uh, you are. Uh, so mean. Do you want a hug? No. Uh, okay, no. I want – stop being slapped. Though. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> No, but that's so true because I think – and part of this is the press. Part of this is what they're hearing out there. It's a great National. time to buy a house. It's such a deal. You know, you can buy them at the courthouse. You can do this. Okay, well, in that little bubble over there across the country, that may be the situation. In our bubble, it's different. And in our bubble, there's not enough houses. We've got more buyers than we have houses. That's so fascinating. Well, Craig and I were talking about that before the show, just like from a national perspective. Mm -hmm. I mean, because in my scope – it's just all about the national numbers, but here it seems like the real estate market is actually, is completely different than what you see on the news. Correct, but they come in with that know. expectation, and yeah. I think that's what Craig's and, and with with inventory to. numbers decreasing, simple economics state this, and we see it in the national and we see it in the numbers um, last year to this year. Um, the average sales price has increased from one hundred and forty five thousand in Fresno County to one hundred and fifty thousand in Fresno County. So again, there is upward pressure. Simple economics take over. There's multiple uh, multiple buyers submitting uh, multiple offers on a single property. Um, if, as a buyer, you want to be competitive just because the type of financing that you're utilizing, do you ask for a 3% seller concession? No. Do you ask for a $2,000 seller concession? Not necessarily. Do you ask for a $1,000 seller concession to pay towards your closing costs and prepaids? Again, not necessarily. If, in Michelle's example, you've got a $100,000 list price and you want to be competitive mm -hmm. in today's market and that property, based upon the comparables that Michelle researches for you, you determine that that house is worth between 103 and 105 based upon the last 90 days of closing. With it, closings within a half mile radius of that property, you better be prepared to go somewhere between 103 and 105. And 
if you want to be competitive, it's all about the net. And the net mm -hmm. is this. Sales price less any seller concession equals what the seller is going to net. Everything else is all going to be relative, but it's all about the net. So it's so, so important. It's all about the net. Also take into consideration, are you asking the seller for a termite report? Mm -hmm. Are you asking the seller uh, to provide a natural hazard disclosure? Are you asking the seller to provide a termite report and clearance? Because the report and the clearance could be two terribly different things. Mm -hmm. Are you asking the seller to provide any additional inspections, well, septic, um, water potability? Are you asking the seller to provide, um, to pay for any county transfer tax? Are you willing to spit, split the escrow fee 50-50 as is customary in Fresno County? Are you asking the seller to pay for a home warranty, typically somewhere in the ballpark of 400 to $500? Could be, depending upon what type of coverage is you're asking the seller to provide. All I'm saying is this, you can ask, 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 but the less you ask for when it comes time for submitting that offer and the, and the seller reviews that offer, the less you ask for, mm -hmm. the more competitive your offer is going to be. It doesn't mean that you that you forego any of your rights in terms of inspections right. on the property. Absolutely. You still get within, depending upon if you're using a standard car contract or which is 17 days, the first 17 days you have to do all inspections on the property. If it's um, a HUD home, you have 15 days from ratification to do all your inspections. If it's a Fannie Mae property or a Freddie Mac property, they're probably going to, go, going to negotiate down to 10 days to do all of your inspections. Bottom line, you're not forgoing any rights. It's informed consent. You need to make sure that you complete your inspections then so that you know exactly what you're getting into. So if you ask for a termite report or you say, we'll provide a termite report as the buyer, which you can, it's all negotiable. Oh. I, just, a, just on this note, as far as five, six years ago, mm -hmm. people could get into a house with what we would consider no skin in the game. Mm -hmm. right. Nothing. They'd come in with nothing, and, and the seller would pay for all the fees, and everything was credited back. Okay, this is another way this market is correcting itself. You have to have skin in the game to purchase a house in this market right now. Yep. You have to have earnest money deposited. You have to be able to come in with some of those closing costs, if at all possible. Otherwise, your your offer is not strong compared to the others that are coming across that, right. that uh, right. seller's table. So you've got to be aware that in this market – don't let don't let people feed you a bunch of hogwash that is you can get in with nothing. That well, isn't that isn't necessarily true. You or, can get in at a low cost. Certainly. But there is some expectation standpoint. for well, you to participate in the yeah, process. And, and I think, you know, maybe you're not you know, getting the deal that like you hear your friend got or something, but relative to where prices were 5 years right. ago, you know, you're still getting probably a great deal. And then if you're financing the property, you're getting even a better deal because rates are considerably right. lower. Sure. So And it's changing every day. Yeah. It's always the ebb and flow. So I just think it's it's correcting itself on its own in mm -hmm. some ways. Which is good. Where people yeah. need to one have a job, two have a bank account, have some of those things in place, and and have to be able to to show documentation that I'm I'm ready to buy a house. I have the financial, my financial house in order, which is something we discuss a lot mm -hmm. in order to move forward. With and, the and I have the ability to be able to bring skin to the game to right. make sure that I can perform, whether it mm -hmm. be reserves, whether it's assets, same thing. Right. Uh, but it's so so important in today's market and setting that baseline expectation. If you want to go out and start looking for a property before you do anything, you really need to speak with a real estate professional, mm -hmm. just so that you get get really a grip on the pulse in terms of the market. So critical, so, so critical. Um, so now is a great time to buy. Home affordability is at, a, at an all-time low. It's very, it's fairly easy to find a property per se, but whether that property is going to be there in two or three days, that's a, that's a whole other story. Um, should you offer more than asking? We talk about that on a regular basis. It's got to be real. We don't want you to offer more than what the property is worth per se, but also more than your level of comfort in terms of what does that trans translate into in terms of a monthly payment. Um, can you offer more than the asking price? Potentially, certainly, depending upon the type of financing and will the property appraise. And does that work? Does that approach work for every particular property out there? If you're offering cash, do you get a discount? Absolutely not. When it comes right down to it, cash is typically for this. Let me say this. Cash is for properties with deficiencies, property that may, properties that may not qualify for financing. Um, 
uh, that's typically where cash enters the game and is extremely, extremely effective. Uh, so don't expect a discount. Um, <laughs> seriously, do not expect a discount. <laughs> so is that just like foreclosures then? Any. 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 Oh, Any. Okay. It might be a, it might be an investment property somebody's had for a long time. Remember, upward pressure on prices. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who's going to get it? Highest net. Mm-hmm. Highest net. Seller's going to hang out, whether it's cash, conventional, um, or FHA financing. Seller is yeah, they'll going wait an extra week for the extra five grand. Trust right. me. Right. And we talked about <laughs> <I> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And we Absolutely. talked about all those things that you asked for. Don't expect to get a burger that's loaded um, in a, in a market. <laughs> There's just too much com- competition. Right. You need to make sure that you streamline your offer so that it can be uh, really, truly, comparatively speaking, to the other offers that are out there. And there will be other offers unless this is just the biggest dog on the street. Most definitely. Um, don't ask for a home warranty. How important is it is it to be patient in today's market? Well, it's extremely, extremely important. You may have to submit seven, eight, nine, ten offers. Know your limits. When it comes right down to it, um, what are your limits? Um, what is it that you can afford? Well, it might be, you know, if it's 115, 115, that's your max. Pure and simple. Um, so we can't stress it enough. So, so important to make sure that you're patient in today's market. Um, Michelle, anything to add? Have I touched on most everything? You have. I, I think patience is the key. I know that I was meeting with some alternate clients this week, and they wanted to offer over in a neighborhood that it was not, it did not make sense. It did not make dollars and cents. I, um, I cautioned them. We ended up not offering over, but in speaking with the agent, she that was receiving the offers, multiple offers, $10,000 over asking. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not going to appraise. Yeah, yeah. But people are impatient, oh. and so it's starting to spark um, the overbidding in unreasonable ways. So we've got to be really ca- cautious and tell our, our buyers, be patient. The right property right. comes along. The right. next best property right. is the next best property. And that's so important key. to note. Mm-hmm. If you'd like more information in terms of how to construct a great offer, all you need to do is contact, contact us on our offer number at 800-979-3958. We'll put you in contact with Michelle. She's a superstar, trust me. Michelle, <laughs> thanks so much for taking the time to be with us on the show this morning. Also, Kate, Yes. Kate Island from UBS Financial Services, financial advisor extraordinaire. Will you come back? Absolutely. Absolutely, I'd positively. Don't forget KMJ Call Kate. Yeah, yeah KMJ, KMJ Call Kate. Call Kate. Let All me right. tell you. So, so important. Well, again, if you have any real estate or real estate financing questions, call us anytime, 800-979-3958. Or check out our resources online at reofresnohomes.com. Look forward to seeing you next week here on 105.9, the FM KMJ. Make it a great day, Central Valley, and we will see you next week. The preceding program was paid for by the Real Estate Radio Network.